The Lee Infield number one Mark III SMLE. Let's check it out. Also affectionately known as the Smelly. The Lee Enfield Number 1 Mark III SMLE for short magazine Lee Enfield. This is just one of those classic type rifles. Uh, it was actually one of the fastest bolt action rifles used during World War II. In fact, they had what they call the Mad Minute, which was firing 20 to 30 rounds accurately in a minute. I mean, this was a super fast bolt action rifle. It's a straight pullback. Once you lift up the bolt, it just pops back. The Lee Enfield Number 1 Mark III SMLE also affectionately known as the Smelly, is one of my all-time favorite bolt-action military surplus rifles. Uh, just the quality, and they're just beautiful. Yes, they're big. I like to call mine Mr. Snuffleupagus because of the end. It's a very distinct look. Now, there were other uh, Lee Enfields that were used during World War II, but this was used during World War I and World War II. Uh, by, again, all the British and Commonwealth forces. And so it's a very well-known firearm design. Now, I purchased this from Classic Firearms over a year ago. Uh, they had gotten a small lot of these in that were really nice. Uh, they do get them from time to time, but this is just one of those rifles that if you like military firearms, this is definitely one that you need in your collection. The Lee Enfield SMLE Mark III. This is a culmination of a number of different rifles. Uh, started out in 1895. This was adopted in the SMLE version in 1904, right before World War I. SMLE stands for Short Magazine Lee Enfield, which would lead you to think that this is a short magazine, which in today's standards it is, but it's actually short rifle. This rifle was actually reduced four troops in the field. They wanted something a little smaller, but they didn't want a carbine or a cavalry carbine. These were used all the way through World War I, a number of actions in between, and then all the way through World War II and beyond. In fact, there are some countries these are still being used today. Now, the magazine is a 10-round box detachable magazine, and that was really the first, especially in World War I. But even in World War II, most of your service rifles were fixed magazines, uh, limited to five rounds. We have a 10 plus one magazine. And then let's go ahead and check the chamber. And the gun is empty. According to British military regulations, you were not allowed to load the magazines. In fact, you didn't have extra mags. You were supposed to load them from the top. This is a stripper clip guide that's actually been attached to the action. And so when you bring it back, you drop in your stripper clip and you can load them in five at a time. So you would use two stripper clips to make this fully loaded. Now the 303 British cartridge is rimmed, which really causes some issues when you're loading them in a magazine. It's one of the reasons why this magazine has a large angle to it. And when you're putting these in, you want to stack them. Now because this is a rimmed case, when you put your round in, you seat it all the way to the back. When you bring your second round in, you want to make sure that rim fits on this side of the other rim. And that way it doesn't jam up. Also, you want to make sure that it gets it in those little ears. Which, of course, it's the same thing when you're loading it in the rifle. You can see how the rims fit together. This one's going in first, so it needs to be past that other rim. Now, here's some old infield clips. You'll notice that the rounds actually stagger. Each one, when you're loading it, you need to make sure that each one fits over the other rim. I'm going to place the stripper clip into the holder. Push it down. I mean, that's actually pretty quick to load. 
bring in your next stripper clip. There we go. So while the German K98 and the Russian Mosin Nagant had an internal magazine of five round capacity, the Lee Enfield had 10 rounds with a detachable magazine. Not even the Garand, which held eight rounds, topped the magazine capacity for their standard issue rifle. Now one of the easiest ways to identify an SMLE is this nose cap. Uh, it's beautiful and it's just one piece. It's flush with the barrel. This is a bayonet mount here on the bottom. It, and actually the ring goes right here at the front instead of around your barrel. And then also you have your ears to protect your sights. And here we have the number four Mark I. Uh, this was a later variation actually used more predominantly in World War II and you can see that it's a totally different look. But there are a number of variations with these rifles but the number four Mark I is one of the most common and the SMLE. Remove your bolt for cleaning. Just bring it back uh, right here. Take the extractor, just bring it over and then you can pull it right out. Uh, and of course this just gives you an area to be able to clean your chamber, whatever you want to do. Then bring it up. You want to line it up uh, with that groove in the top of the receiver. And then when you get here, we just want to bring that extractor down and then you're good to go. But also one thing you'll notice is that when I close the bolt, the gun is cocked. Now getting a really firm grip right here and then pulling the trigger, you can let that down, but you wanna make sure you point that in a very safe direction. But if you wanna leave it cocked, this is a safety and it comes all the way back. There's a little notch in the stock and this puts it in safe position. And then if you wanna go ahead and disengage your safety, just move it forward. But guys, look at the machining that went into this. And that's one of the things about these old rifles. A lot of the curves, a lot of the machining that's done here was actually changed once they went to the number four Mark I. Um, and that was much easier to produce. And of course, during wartime, they really needed to produce these as quick as possible. The rear tangent sight, it does have ears that come up to protect it. Uh, this is a 50 yard increment here if you push this button on the side. And then it has 25 yard increments that can be adjusted right here with this little gear. But it goes out from 200 all the way to 2,000 yards. Some of the early ones actually had increments here for windage. Uh, it was a very precise type rifle and they were made for accuracy. So one of the big things the British Empire was big about is accuracy, especially after the Boer War because those guys were sharpshooters. But there are a number of different sight configurations that were on these. There are so many different models of the Lee Enfield. It's almost mind boggling. Leave it to the British. <laughs> Of course, your trigger guard is all steel and your trigger, and again, there is your mag release right there. It just pops down and you can bring that out. Nice click. Also, it has a small little lanyard loop right here. Some of the magazines actually had a small chain that fit to the magazines, but they did away with that. I love the old brass butt cap. Uh, a lot of these, even the number four Mark ones, a lot of them had that brass butt cap. They did do away with that just to come out ease production. And then it has a small little hole for, you know, your bottle of oil or whatever for cleaning. Now the stock is actually in four pieces. We have the butt stock and it's attached right here to the receiver. And the second part of the stock includes the full action. Then we have a hand guard that's right before the sight. And number four, we have a hand guard that fits all along the top. The barrel band that holds on the hand guard, this is actually hinged. And you have a screw here, you have your uh, sling swivel. Uh, this will actually unfold out. This screw is pretty tight, or I would show you, but it does just kind of fold out, makes it easy to disassemble. Now right here at the back stock, this typically has the markings uh, of manufacture. It even has the date. I'm not sure it's just plain, but there are markings all through this. Here with the safety, we do have markings underneath, and we do have markings up here at the chamber. Guys, I would love to know the date on this rifle, but there just aren't any markings indicating it. Now here we have the number four Mark I, and these were used extensively during World War II, issued to British troops, and there are a lot of upgrades to this rifle over the SMLE. And so while England stopped producing the SMLE, Australia and India continued production for even up into the 50s. Here at the top we have the number four Mark I. Uh, you can see uh, definitely the barrel comes out, has a totally different setup for bayonet, very simplized, and then we have, of course, our uh, guards for our sight. And we have a barrel band right here at the front. And back here you can see, I mean, the SMLE is just totally different. Another big advantage of the Mark IV is that it does have this aperture sight, and we do have a sight set up 
some of the later models during the war they did away with some of these parts just because it made it just more complicated to make and they went with just a standard flip up aperture sight for close up and for distance but this one has that beautiful aperture sight and you can imagine <laughs> during the war time this was probably one of the first things to go also the stripper clip guide is totally different very squared off everything is just less machining and it sped up production now we're using some federal 150 grain soft point this is all i could find at the time and this was at the height of, of the ammo shortage and so you know typically i use fiocchi but um, this is what we're going to be using today and i was really lucky to get some but there's a lot of companies that still make 303. Now guys, when it comes to military surplus, uh, there's something about taking it to the range that's totally different. Uh, you know the legend that comes behind these. Uh, these are actually veterans of war, and there's just something about that that's just fascinating to me. Uh, it kind of, when you bring it out, it kind of gives you that feel for it. Yes, these are older designs. I mean, they're definitely something that's, that's pretty archaic in today's world. But back then, this was the main rifle that was used by the British forces for about 75 years. So it's definitely a proven design. The wood, the steel, the brass on the end. I mean, it's just something from a bygone era. And with the Lee Enfields, all of them. I mean, they're just so fast to load and to reload. Um, and then with that 10 round box magazine, which was way ahead of its time during World War I and World War II. One of the things that the Germans would do when they came over the lines is they thought that they were being uh, repelled by full automatic rifles because these were just so fast. And again, it carried that 10 round capacity. Uh, the length of it, the balance is just beautiful. With this size rifle, 303 British, which is a pretty potent round, you know, it makes it really soft to shoot. Now we did have a few issues initially with the extractor not closing down on the cartridge. I don't know if it was because of the federal ammunition. We didn't really have anything else to check it behind. Uh, but once I kind of cleaned the bolt out on the second range day, it worked a lot better. A little sticky here and there, but overall it was really smooth. I've had a number of SMLEs, never had this problem, but other than that, we didn't have any malfunctions. Everyone I've ever owned has been very smooth shooting. Uh, of course, this is just a vintage, classic uh, surplus rifle. And so, you know, when you get them, you're going to get them in different conditions and different shapes. But this is a great shooter. I mean, we had a lot of fun at the range. And again, it's just got a lot of history behind it, which gives it a whole other facet when you get into the firearms world. I mean, we have our polymer frame striker fire pistols. We have our AR, AKs. Bringing out an old bolt action rifle that was used in war is just there's just something about it and here on the right we have the 303 british and then we have a 30 alt 6 and this is actually m2 ball uh, this is a hunting round so this is not necessarily what you would use but it was all i could find i mean it's getting a little difficult to find it this is actually 7.7 .7 by 55 m rimmed or r and it travels at about 2500 to 2600 feet per second the 303 british has taken more game in africa than any other caliber and it really compares very close to the 30 alt 6 even though the brass is longer. One thing about 30 alt 6 is it typically will handle lighter weight bullets better than the 303. The SMLE is a huge piece of history, really the form that took the number 4 Mark 1 and beyond. The Lee Enfield was used all over the world in so many different actions. Whether it was Commonwealth countries, whether it was sold off surplus for different countries to be able to defend themselves, it's just a an iconic piece of history and the beauty of these rifles is just something else. Now unfortunately when these came into the country originally I remember buying these for $59 a piece and guys when surplus comes in in quantity is the best time to buy it. Uh, we've gotten to the point now where they're just finding small lots here and there of course government restrictions but also European countries are now buying these up. These are going to be going up in price honestly to meet the true value of the gun. So while you may see these for, you know, four or $500, that's just what these guns are now worth. When the mass surplus was coming in, they were cheap. And guys, that's when you pick them up. Lord knows, I wish we could go back to the days when you could pick these up for under $100. But those days are long gone. 
So guys, when it comes to collectible military surplus, uh, the Lee Enfield stands at the top of the heap, in my opinion, as far as bolt action rifles. Uh, yes, the Springfield 1903 and the Mauser K98, the Mosin Nagant, there's a bunch of them out there, but there's just something about this old rifle, just the way it looks, it's just got a different, unique appeal to it that I really love. And while these rifles have really risen in value over the past few years, uh, they've really come up to the true value of what this rifle is. And being used from World War I all the way until 1957, I mean, it speaks a lot about the capability of these, this type rifle. And I want to thank Ben at Classic Firearms for picking out this beautiful rifle. Guys, we want to thank Sportsman's Guide for sending the British helmet and also for the other vintage era accoutrements. Uh, you can get a $20 off every $100 or more purchase on the Sportsman's Guide website using Such. No zero zero. So check out Sportsman's Guide. And guys, it'll make you really stand out and look very stylish. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. And God save the Queen. And long live the Republic. Also affectionately known as the smelly. It smells good. You got that? Of course you do. You're a smart person. And this rifle served the US. <laughs> Other surplus stuff and surplus and surplus guide. It's not surplus guide. One of the easiest ways to tell if this is one of the SMLE versions is this. Is this now you can uncock it by pulling the trigger and oops, see that's why you don't want to do it tally ho blokes <laughs>